Welcome back to the third day of Congress here at the Hux stage uh, with a very interesting sounding talk uh, Open Source as a Model for Global Collaboration where Hong Fuk Dong Deng will share successful examples on how open source can be a helpful tool or solution to global problems and I think with that out of the way uh, I can already give over to our speaker Thank you, Lenny, for uh, the introduction. I'm very happy to be here. Um, my first Congress was 31C3. Um, at that time, I also gave a talk on stage about uh, local production in fashion in textile uh, industry. I still remember how I was so impressed with uh, the whole thing overwhelmed with uh, the ambient the setting uh, projects uh, and the people at the CCC back then. And of course, like many people, I came back every year. I still can't believe that this year there is no um, face to face congress, but um, I'm still very glad that we have this um, virtual experience and um, happy to to be part of this. A little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Vietnam. Um, uh, uh, what is my relationship with um, open source? Uh, I am a founder of uh, Force Asia. This is an Asia-based organization that develops open source software and hardware. We promote uh, open source activities and try to grow the communities in the region. Because of uh, my work and, in, uh, and engagement in the open source community um, over like 10 years, um, I got uh, elected to be uh, the vice president of the Open Source Initiative. This is a U.S. nonprofit that safeguards the open source definition and maintains uh, the open source license list. Recently, I also joined the Open Source Business Alliance as a board member. This is a German nonprofit that operates Europe's uh, biggest network of companies developing, building, and using open source uh, software. Um, what is different between now and the 31st, uh, 31C3? Um, not so much. Uh, I'm pretty glad to say that I'm still doing the same thing. I forget for for open source um, uh, um, uh, development, open source um, uh, activities, and uh, build a community. And um, yeah, so um, this is uh, what I do. Uh, today, I'm going to cover uh, three topics. At first, I want to um, talk a little bit about the lesson learned and example how we uh, build open source projects and community um, and uh, how open source is a model that can enable global collaboration and then I want to touch uh, briefly on two trains that bring negative effects to the open source um, ecosystem that I have seen um, the past few years. And finally, uh, a small call to action. Lesson learned. Um, it all started back into um, 2009 when my partner and I um, founded Force Asia organization back in Vietnam. Uh, at that time, um, we realized um, the opportunities that open source and open technologies can bring to uh, the people in the developing nation and country, the opportunity to learn, to share, and to develop your own solution. Um, we see this as opportunity and we want to bring this opportunity to spread the idea to more people, build a community so that people can um, make their own decision and build their own solution for themselves. Force Asia is basically a network of people who share the same idea, the same belief in sharing and collaboration. Uh, even though our name is Force Asia, we have um, 
uh, members, contributors from outside of Asia as well, from Europe, from Australia, US, and uh, many uh, countries around the world. What we are uh, what we are doing, um, we develop software and hardware projects like many other open source uh, organizations out there. We uh, we run events uh, to bring people together. Um, in uh, before it was face to face uh, uh, event, now it's on the virtual spaces. Uh, another focus of us is on education. So we teach people how to write, uh, how to write code, how to contribute to different open source projects because we believe that in order to um, uh, to change something, in order to um, you know, to, uh, to 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 increase the adoption, everything needs to start with um, education. So it's also um, our uh, big focus. Uh, since 2009, we managed to to sustain the operation, and uh, this is actually not so so easy as we started um, with two people as a grassroots um, organization. We bootstrap most of our activities ourselves. Do not have any backing by a corporation or by government or or American life funding organization. Something like this to start, start everything on ourselves. So it's always a big question for us how we can uh, sustain the um, the operation. Uh, the question about how to uh, continue to grow and develop further. Uh, we constantly think of a model how open source can generate um, an income financially that's have to continue to build and work uh, on the projects of um, of our interests and that we are, we are passionate about. So there are different ways for to sustain. For instance, we offer um, uh, services around the software that we develop. We sell hardware and we also do consultancy. Uh, the scale of the organization, we have about 35,000 uh, subscribers to our mailing list and, and media, social media, about 4,000 developers registered on uh, GitHub. Uh, through our training education program, we uh, onboard 2,000 uh, young developers and students every year through um, coding programs. Uh, we organize a lot of um, face to face meetings Bef like previous year now we do a lot of um, virtual events um, and also hackathons uh, we maintain a technical blog so basically this is a, a space for um, for people to share um, technical knowledge uh, these are some of um, the um, uh, software and uh, hardware projects that um, we develop in the Force Asia community. Uh, today, I would just uh, emphasize. I want I want to introduce two projects um, as an example how um, open source work in a low scale, starting from somewhere in Asia. First of all, um, Event Ye. So the Event Ye is a, pro uh, a project that started in 2015. So uh, this is an open source event management system. We organize events uh, since 2009, and uh, it's always challenging for us um, to see uh, what kind of tooling to use for call for papers, what to use for uh, for scheduling for for ticket thing, and we always have to use like multiple uh, tools in the beginning. In the very beginning, we use um, Google Form just to collect um, uh, like submission. But we also want to, at one point, to realize that uh, there should be an open source solution that have organizer to run event. It's, it's really important to, to to do events just like the, the the Congress, where people can get together, can share the idea. That was the original. Uh, go to have an open source event management system. So we started to to build this event yay, and now it become like fully functional. Uh, it comes with the call for our papers, scheduling, uh, ticketing, uh, and uh, we also recently integrating uh, video conferencing. The, the the solution entirely open source, and we also work with other open source projects. For instance, we integrated GC Big Blue Button, and um, of course there are also Bridges to other uh, uh, video solutions. Um, this is something uh, that we see as an alternative to um, proprietary software like Eventbrite. Another project that I uh, 
So uh, it's one thing that I forget to mention. Um, so we have about a uh, hundred contributors since 2015 contribute to Event Yay, and um, they are not call only coming from from uh, from Vietnam, India, the, the the park where we are in, but we also got developer from from Europe and the system being uh, used by um, uh, organization in the U.S. Um, as well. Um, and now we can continue to collaborate with more uh, projects to develop further event yay. Pocket Science Lab, um, this is another example. Uh, we previously, I think the past few years, we have our assembly at the CCC and we also run workshop um, on the Pocket Science Lab. This is the open source hardware device for um, education that Build as a teacher student project starting from from India, but now it has become um, a, um, a, a, a consumer product. We distribute it um, in ma in many different uh, continents, including uh, Europe, the U.S. And uh, the collaboration here, uh, we came to the CCC some years ago and we got like feedback from uh, the community how to change uh, the design, the blueprint of, of the hardware. And we also um, collaborate with um, uh, a, a European level project, the Horizon 2020 on uh, Pocket Science Lab, uh, work together with Fraunhofer Institute here in Germany on uh, the production of, of the hardware. So um, yeah, I want to um, talk a little bit about something that we learned over the years of developing uh, projects and also building the community. I often get the question from people, so how the whole thing gets started? How do you get uh, people to contribute? What, how do you come up with uh, which project to work with? So back in 2009, Force Asia started out as a, as a place, as a conference, an event where people meet and exchange ideas. And uh, when people come together, they start to develop projects, they start to work together. But it's really important um, in the beginning of um, building uh, a community, uh, we need to understand the the landscape. So people around you, what kind of technology they uh, they are familiar with. Uh, when you introduce something, you, you need to, to be sure that um, the people in the community are excited about um, uh, the ideas or the project. And uh, as you see on the picture, um, uh, the people around us at, at that time are very young people. They're just getting out from university and also um, did not expose a lot to to the the whole um, like global open source movement. So we try to promote a lot a contribution apart from from coding. So there are a lot of things that people can contribute. For instance, uh, doing design, writing um, article, promoting a, a project or organize event, doing fundraising, and many more. And uh, we realized that to to promote contribution, uh, uh, like apart from technical, um, uh, uh, can can help to to widen uh, to attract new new journal and one thing uh, is still valid it's valid until today which is try to keep the the entry barrier low uh, if you uh, contribute to various projects as uh, an open source project you can see um, in order to set it up on your local server so the same day so somebody before they start to contribute they need somehow to install it on their local machine and it's always different experience for different projects. Uh, not something like out of the box that can easily be done by a beginner. So, so for us, still now the question is how to keep the NG barrier very low. How to get people like setting up and start it before they can actually contribute. Um, another lesson that we learn is um, to understand uh, of the motivation of developers. So, if you want to to, to attract uh, like people who write code, uh, which is like the core thing of the project, right? So need, you uh, you need to know to to aware of their motivation. So a lot of um, uh, people from from Asia community are motivated by 
opportunities to to get higher in the future opportunity to travel outside of the country, which is very difficult for um, for for many citizens citizen in that particular uh, particular region. Um, and of course, the, they are motivated to work on tooling uh, that they are familiar with. So we understand this, um, um, understand the motivation and what we try to offer to our contributors is something that's much and that can satisfy their wish. Um, since 2012, we, uh, we try to reach out to more international communities and invite uh, developers, speakers from the West to come and connect with our OE people to share the knowledge and at the same time we look for opportunities to bring the contributors like overseas where they can get um, exposed to more uh, global environment. Um, another thing uh, that we, we learned over the year, um, there's so many open source projects out there, right? Um, it's not that uh, one day you develop something to put it online and then they will, they will attract like attention from, from the community. It's really difficult these days to get uh, to onboard new developers or to get people actually engaged and contribute to your projects. And we learned that um, as a developer, as a, uh, as a, as a coach, writer people people like to improve their skill so we organize um, something like coding contest it's been going on for the past four years already so we do it uh, throughout the year try to 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 help people um, at first to learn how to code and then uh, seeing the as they get learning and the better they also win the prize for contributing to uh, to our projects and it's uh, we find it really useful not only to, to attract new uh, contributors but at, at the same time you you need to widen the pool of contributor it is the first step to um, to guide people to to um, uh, to to show people how to contribute to not only only our project, but also um, open source um, in general. Developer uh, retention. Um, so this, uh, so I, I, I just want to emphasize that uh, there are a lot of things that happening in the in the last ten years. I'm not be able to. Um, to share every details, but I hope that uh, to, to to summarize a few highlights in this um, um, presentation. Uh, retention is a big question for many projects, not only ourselves. Uh, when you um, build an open source project, you uh, like you need to aware and understand that at one point people will move on, so people need to go on with their life, they find something else that's more interesting. It's difficult to keep like people like continuously engaged over the years. So therefore it's important to always um, uh, reach out to more uh, people in the community, try to um, uh, do, uh, do, to, do to engage and chain newcomers. At the same time, uh, you should not um, like put the knowledge into like one core person is always important to make sure that you have a backup on whatever um, uh, you are doing, like introduce like peer review to ensure that there are more people can review the course and um, uh, of course minimum two maintainers so that you can uh, you don't have to rely on one person um, over the time. Um, delegate tasks. This, this is something that we find very useful when people join the project. Um, people like to have more responsibilities. Um, it also motivated them. Uh, this is qu quite interesting uh, finding. So people not only motivated them by um, by financial benefit uh, or by traveling, but some people do motivated by the responsibilities that they have. So we introduced like mentor roles where people can can help uh, the um, uh, the younger uh, um, developers or newcomer to to to, um, to get involved, and this is something that can uh, motivate and and keep people um, engaged in the project. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, we also introduce uh, development proof practices. This is something that is not new to many like uh, project out there. The um, the question is. 
how can the practices being uh, enforced and implemented in the, in your development? This is the question. So a few things that we um, uh, uh, got out from from our development practices, which is always march one issue to one pull request. This sounds very simple, but a lot of people don't do it. Break big issue into multiple small issues. It's also easier for people to review. It doesn't have require so much effort from uh, from the reviewer. Uh, test before making a pull request. So, um, of course, uh, this is a standard way, but a lot of people still to make a PR without testing before they, they make a PR. We could make things like more difficult if you merge and then something goes wrong, you have to, to reverse the change. Um, only chain yeah, that you stay on the PR, you set the PR on, on one thing, but actually there are a lot of different code chain into one PR, which is not uh, welcome or encouraged. Um, help each other review each other pull request. This is like a peer review practice that we always encourage. Document why coding. So document uh, it's, it's not a, a favorite thing to do for developer, um, but we um, always encourage our contributors to, to, to document why they are coding so the next person can understand and follow up with, um, with the progress earned right access. So basically, after contribute uh, to the project for some time, you'll be able to earn the right access to the repository. And one thing that's very important is to avoid private conversation and only collaborate uh, with the community with the on the project level chat. So we do uh, get uh, for our chat and every single project have their own project channel. So instead of two developers talking like on private about how to fix an issue, we encourage people to um, uh, to, to, to have their conversation on, um, on the um, on the public channel. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and uh, how can you make sure that people really follow the practices? So it's about encourage people to remind each other. It's a practice that um, uh, the, uh, the developers uh, uh, continuously uh, helping each other and being appraised for uh, being being uh, appreciate for for um, for follow um, the the practice. Um, so again, so open source is uh, a decentralized software development model that encourages open collaboration has proven how collaboration could work successfully on the global scale. Of course, the project that we develop is on a very um, uh, small scales compared to uh, Wikipedia or compared to the, the Linux kernel. But you could imagine starting from uh, a project somewhere in Croatia is now being used um, uh, by uh, many other uh, countries at the same time, heavy contributors from everywhere. So if we can achieve um, a local collaboration with this project, imagine how much impact it could have if open source be done on the national level or on government level. So, um, yeah, so I just want to give one quick example here. Uh, the current coronavirus um, pandemic, right? So a lot of uh, digital solutions have been developed everywhere around the world. This is an example of the digital contact tracing application developed in Southeast Asia. As you can see here, we only have 10 country in, in, in Asia and in Southeast Asia region. And these six country, they all like develop their own solution. Yeah. And it's all tackle similar problem. They all see that they all want to have a digital uh, contact tracing app, but um, different country that is their own application, um, even though it could be possible like to share and collaborate in some way, but it did not happen. So um, I don't know how much it costs for, for this country to develop the solution, but I read somewhere online, the Corona Fun app developed in Germany that cost over 20, 20 million euros. So you imagine if each country spend this much money to develop similar solution, why there is no collaboration uh, across um, nations so that we can save the resources at the same time, speed up the whole process. Um, 
corona pandemic is only one of the challenges that we are facing these, these days. Climate change, political war, so many issues. Um, open source collaboration could be a solution to, to many problems, but we need more examples. We need a successful example to accelerate the whole open model in all industry. Open source should not be only about software. It could be the open model could apply for, for hardware, for pharmaceutical um, formula, could apply for processes and uh, it should be open source, open sender, or should be a default for uh, uh, for all different industries and uh, um, encourage more collaboration across um, borders. Uh, moving on, I want to um, talk a little bit on the trends that bring uh, negative effects to open source ecosystem that I um, have observed in the past year. First of all, that I want to, to talk about digital shaming. So digital shaming is being um, electronically attacked online. It, uh, it can literally destroy people's lives financially and emotionally. And sadly, there, there is an increasing number of open source contributors or anyone could be victims of this digital shaming. Have you ever participated in a digital shaming act? For example, if you unconsciously like a tweet or retweet something that you read online. Yeah, so I don't know if you, um, anyone remember um, a tweet that happened in PyCon some years ago where um, uh, some people put um, talk about a conversation, a private conversation of two uh, male developers uh, in a sexual way, considered a sexual way, and then these people got fired for 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 their act. Yeah, and uh, this is just one of the example. If you see something that uh, it's happening online, and you see so many people like the treat and, and, and you think that uh, you should also support um, uh, this uh, activity by like or retreat. So think about it before you do something. If you are not, you, if you do not know the person, do not and do not have like the understanding the whole situation, do not be part of digital shaming. One thing I think that is important to, to understand is uh, the self-serving bias. Self-serving bias is an action done only for one's uh, own benefit, sometimes at the expense of the of others. It's happened every day in our life. For example, uh, a few days ago, I, for, um, I forgot to call a doctor to change my doctor appointment. Um, and then when I was asked by my partner if I've done this because I don't want myself to look bad, I just say that, oh, I called the, the doctor's office, but nobody answered the, the call. Yeah, so we tend to, to be always biased on our side, on ourselves, right? Uh, so whatever information that you see people claim online, you need to, to see that people often talk on their on their own perspective, yeah? And, um, and uh, of course, I can be a very fair person, but I will always try to protect myself. So, um, uh, and a lot of activities like this happen on the internet. And um, many, uh, I see that, I see many um, old, the generation of contributors are leaving the community because um, of this uh, digital shaming because something that uh, that they might have missed uh, spoken in the public and then being criticized so much by the public and then forced them to leave the community and this really uh, creates an unhealthy environment for people who who contribute and involve um, in open source community. And there's also something that uh, we should be aware of. There are a lot of people out there use vulnerable act for public interest because they they be, they think that um, if you if you um, spread yourself as a victim, you you could get the attention and the support from the public and it's also good to, to build up your profile and interest. So this is uh, 
um, it's so, uh, like unreasonable, uh, unreasonable, but it's still a practice that happened on online on on the internet. So it's important for us to be aware and do not be part of, of this uh, whole thing. If we uh, do not support the uh, support initiative, if you do not know um, the people who involved or do not have a clear understanding of the real story. Another thing that I, another trend that I also want to, to highlight here, diversity and inclusive inclusion. I'm really glad that there's so many, um, um, so many uh, initiative and so many effort uh, uh, in our society to push diversity and inclusion these days. Uh, by definition, diversity refers to the traits and the characteristic that make people unique, while inclusion refers to the behaviors and social norms that ensure people feel welcome. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, um, uh, there's so many corporation, big company, uh, now embrace um, diversity inclusion by uh, saying that they want to to get more women into leadership position. Um, they want to develop a more inclusive recruitment process where um, uh, discrimination in uh, recruitment could be limited and there's also many more. Yeah, so and you can see there's more agency now being informed uh, to advise on diversity inclusion. There's more jobs created for, for people who research and uh, who want to um, develop further uh, uh, in, that, in that field. So I'm also very happy because myself as a minority, um, uh, I'm a di I have a diverse background. I'm a woman at the same time coming from Asia. So this whole be it's like I, for many uh, years during my my career um, uh, life, I also experienced discrimination, and this is uh, a really great thing for 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 people like um, like myself, and also a great thing uh, towards a more uh, eco society. However, there there are some side effects that I want I want to emphasize here on this. Um, there's different initiatives, right? That uh, that we should support, but there are also something that create more um, confusion for 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 people, especially people uh, coming from uh, a non uh, English uh, native speakers. Yeah, uh, have you ever experienced like you come to a meeting room uh, with uh, uh, with your colleagues or people you work with, and you afraid of um, bringing up uh, afraid of saying something because you're not sure afraid of address a person because you're not sure what kind of pronoun you should um, use to address that person yeah and there's a lot of rules about the way how you should speak in public yeah of course um if i um the the advantage is uh, for being a non-native speaker i can always say that i'm not aware of all the um uh, uh, implication in the languages, but it's really difficult for people, like for for white people, um, who consider as a native speaker. So they now started to to be worried about what is the right thing that if they allow to uh, to say or not. It, will they be like um, offend somebody in public? And I heard it's a lot in in the communities these days. So I just want us to see that. Diversity inclusion is a good thing. We definitely need to support it, but we also need to be aware that uh, white people, white men, is also part of the community, part of the diversity uh, and, and inclusion uh, group. It should be about everyone. So we should not exclude or make people like feel uncomfortable um, about like coming up with new initiative that only applicable for people um, in particular uh, uh, countries. Yeah, and um, again, so I'm worried about um, is it the whole diversity and inclusion, the side effect, is our freedom of speech being limited because of too many rules of life these days? And do people really like can freely um, give their feedback, uh, criticism, um, actually 
is not always bad, so it's help people to improve and become better. I want to give another example that has happened to me recently. Um, I was at an open source event uh, where there was a group of people talking, presenting about uh, policy on a European level. So, so this is a group that advised the Commission um, on on policy, and they using. Uh, um, uh, uh, a closed source software like PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint to present. And there was a, um, a message in the community saying that, uh, okay, so if we, we advise the, the, the commission on the using open source, we don't wish, don't we should, should we use uh, open source ourselves? And this person gave the comment being attached so much by, uh, <laughs> um, on the chat saying that, okay, so this is an act of, um, um, uh, excluding the people, right? So even though he just like they say the truth that if you uh, work on open source, don't you soon you use open source yourself? And he's being like called out by many people saying that uh, this is a bad act because uh, you should um, uh, not criticize people, should allow people to, uh, to 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 participate. So so for me, so I, I do not think it's it's a big thing, but but I see that um, people have different opinion, and then that person did not like want to to come back anymore just by saying a fact and then hit like stating the fact being uh, redesigned as not support uh, inclusion practice in in the community so um this is something that we we should be all be aware and, and we with this we should all be aware and and think about like support the right initiative and uh, be um, more open like put yourself into uh, other people uh, like people's shoes right not everyone have the same understanding and when people like um, say the fact it doesn't mean that they try to to redesign the other person um, call to action. Uh, each and every one of us can have, can offer support with uh, we are capable of. There's so many things that we can do to um, to become a good a good citizen. Uh, first of all, use open source software. As I mentioned that example earlier, yeah. So um, my grandmother, my my mother, yeah. So um, they have never spoke to open software before. I could understand it's difficult to get these people. But if you are working as a, an organization that advise government on open source level, please use open source. If you got funding from the government to develop open source project, use open source. Uh, products yourself. There's so many in, uh, alternatives. So instead of Zoom, you just see Big Blue Button. Instead of Eventbrite, you even, yeah, instead of Google Cloud, you Nextcloud. There's so many options out there that you that, that, that you can that you can use. Um, just by using open source uh, software, you really, like have a have a put a support on on the ecosystem. Uh, contribute to open source projects. Uh, there are so many ways. So if writing code, contribute to documentation, globalized, uh, uh, global uh, globalization, including localization, so translate project into different languages, organize um, virtual events and try to uh, bring people together. Um, there are also a lot of like design works and, um, and also make donation to open source project. Talk about different open source projects. There's something that, that anyone can can do. If you are a developer, release your work open source. Uh, an example earlier about the tracing app, right? So how, imagine how much money we could save just by uh, sharing, develop, like uh, together. Um, if you have one uh, problem, yeah. So why why do we we like develop 10, uh, 20 different solutions to tackle one uh, problems? Yeah. So we can also work together. Uh, advocate for open source model in your organization. So open source is not only about software, it's about open collaboration, it's about sharing the knowledge. Yeah, bring the knowledge to uh, to more people. Uh, advocate for uh, mo this model inside your organization, in company, and uh, in uh, your government. Uh, there's so much that you can do here if you live in Europe. So in Asia, it's so difficult. Uh, we never have a, uh, like the opportunity to talk directly with our politician, but you have the chance here. So um, uh, do that and make sure that um, 
there's a support for, for open source development. I, I know that there is a new open source strategy that being um, introduced by the commission for um, 20 and 23. So you can check out um, that as well. Uh, support open source, uh, small and medium enterprise. Yeah. So if you could um, give a contract or could hire someone to work, so why not uh, work with small and medium companies? So we don't want open source is a few of um, in a better view for cooperation, multinational companies um, anymore. We want more um, uh, companies to come and um, uh, and also uh, be in part of the ecosystem. And finally, uh, bring open source in education. So, in, in the, there's several ways that you can do that you can uh, make education possible. For instance, I um, I teach my mom how to use um, Ubuntu or, or Libre Office. So, education could start in your in your home, and then uh, it could be like in school, work with, together with teacher, uh, university, do education uh, coding program like um, like what we um, well like what we do at the Vos. Asia, but uh, there's so many small things um, that you that you could do, like connect with people around you, educate people around you, your friend, your family members. Um, finally, um, take an active role. Everyone, uh, anyone can make a difference. Uh, we just need to um, to do it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would like to take the chance to invite you as well to our summit uh, in, um, uh, in March between 13 to 21st, 2000, March 2021, uh, to connect and collaborate with the uh, open source community in Asia. This is going to be uh, a virtual event as well. Um, below is my uh, email. Um, I'm happy um, to, to stay in touch. And if you have any uh, questions about our um, projects or about this presentation, please feel free to, to contact me. Thank you. All right. So um, I have four questions uh, as of current standing. And I think I'm just going to go with the first one. Do you know of solutions to avoid information hierarchies, in essence, single people knowing crucial information? Um, so I don't know a solution like to avoid uh, hierarchy, but uh, I could say that uh, the open source uh, development model. So when the, the circles and the process open openly available to to everyone. So this is uh, a way to avoid like inf information in terms of uh, hierarchy. Yeah. So if you do open source, uh, like in in the open way. So you documented your work. You the, the how the infrastructure um, uh, develops. So everything is openly documented. So everyone can have the access. So it's the same with with, uh, with many open source projects out there. If you look look up on GitHub, you, there's no secret on uh, on our repository, right? The way we develop and how the infrastructure set up. What is the blueprint for our hardware? Everything is publicly available to to everyone. So I would say that the open source model is a way to limit um, hierarchy to, uh, um, information. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question about inclusion. Uh, how is it? Oh, is there an easy way to break the language barrier in an international community? Uh, many people want to contribute, but not everyone does speak English well enough to dis discuss technical or other issues deeply. Yes, so uh, the language barriers, uh, it, it has been a topic like for so, so many years. So uh, what do you think that what could be a suitable solution for this? So there's a, like translation um, application out there. But of course, this is a barrier that is it's always there, the language barrier, right? However, uh, on the good side, more and more people getting uh, um, uh, like being trained on on English. So 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 it, it, you can see this there even like in developing country like uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. More and more people started to learn and speak uh, English um, uh, very uh, very good and fluently. So it's about like um, you, like the need we need 
time like for, for people to get into um, like uh, to learn the language and at the same time to contribute there is not an easy solution to break the language barrier there's always like some project they um, they do uh, they, they translate to make sure that uh, the, uh, like they translate the uh, the contributor license the contributor guidelines so uh, to show people um, how to contribute um, and in the, in different languages, but at the same time, you know, it's not a, a ultimate uh, a solution because uh, in order to write the code, most of uh, uh, the syntax, you know, and uh, and and the words that written in English, people uh, need to to, to understand uh, and also have a certain level. But the good thing is that. Um, people getting uh, better and better so there's so many uh, way uh, that people can can have to learn um, the language so I think that in the next few years uh, hopefully there won't be a language barrier anymore as uh, everyone could be able to speak and write in English okay. and do you have plans on expanding outside of Asia or with post Asia maybe to Africa or uh, other continents countries? <laughs> Yes, so um, uh, for for Asia, right? As, as I mentioned, we base out Asia, but the projects that we do it actually not only focus on Asia. So we have um, a partner here in Europe. So we work together with um, uh, um, uh, the. Um, uh, a European Union. We work together with Fraunhofer Institute, and we are part of the um, Open Next um, uh, program. So there, there, there is already existing collaboration. So we not focus only on the the Asian market because open source is a cross border. So anyone can do, anyone can contribute. Um, Africa is also um, a very good um, uh, question here. So we connect with, with like um, Africa for us. So um, uh, it's again, so it's not on a, um, any, uh, there's no nothing Congress that, that I could share at the moment, but uh, there's also initiative um, and uh, and user group that active in, in Africa. And we also like connect with them um, at Congress. I don't know if anyone from, uh, from Africa is here at the Congress, but but um, at the um, Open Source Initiative at Force Asia uh, Summit, we do have people coming and exchange and connect with us. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And the last question for today would be uh, how much of Force Asia's interests or activities uh, promote contributing to existing popular Force software projects? Uh, could you uh, repeat that question, please? It's quite long. Okay. Uh, how much of FOSS Asia's interest is into promoting contribution to existing open source free software projects? Uh, yes, so actually we promote uh, not only our project, but we actually do promote a lot of other open source projects. As I mentioned, we um, we use Trissy from the stack, yeah. So so the, the entire um, uh, pandemic, we we try to, to use open source solution as much as possible. We set up our own Nextcloud instance uh, in the project. We use uh, LibreOffice for um, for several years. Uh, we use Scheme Inkscape. So we promote also in our training, like at university and and the school that we work with, we offer training on open source solution to to people. So not only we do not only promote our our own uh, for Asia project, but we actively promote other projects. And I believe that there's also like um, uh, some project um, that I know in the community getting a uh, contributor from the Force Asia community. So which is something that we are very glad in order to survive. Um, yeah, and in order to grow the ecosystem, it's not only about your organization, it's about the collaboration, you need to work with other um, organization and you need to uh, foster collaboration operation in order to grow and, 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 and foster the entire network. So we are very open uh, to work with other projects as well. As I said, we integrated GC already in event yay and, and also big blue button. Yeah. And um, yeah, so there are many more examples. Okay. I think that really nicely concludes this great talk. And you left your details in the slides. So if anyone still has questions, as she said, write her an email. And I think from our side, this talk is finished. And if you have anything more to say, say so. And apart from that, uh, we're done. Yeah, so um, I just want to say thank you very much for, again for having me. And thank you, Lenny uh, and Marcus for setting up the whole thing. I really appreciate it. <laughs>
Ciao.